R Markdown allows you to create documents in a programmatic fashion that lends itself towards reproducibility. This chapter is going to go through the various format options that are available with R Markdown, and then it's going to go through an example of an HTML document that you can create with R Markdown. And then finally, we're going to go through how to create and what you can do with an R notebook. We'll begin by creating a new document by selecting the new file button towards the top left corner of R Studio. So it's going to be this little icon here. We're going to click the click the drop down, and then we're going to choose R Markdown from this menu. Okay. So now you should get a display menu that looks something like this. You'll notice that you have four main options on the left hand side. So we have document, presentation, shiny, and from template. Each of these options will have several sub options. The document option, for example, is selected by default, and you can see there are three sub options on the right hand side. So we have HTML, we have PDF, and we have Word. The presentation option allows you to create slide based presentations in either HTML, PDF, or even PowerPoint format. The shiny option allows you to create either presentations or documents, which include interactive shiny components. And then finally, the from template option will display several options for you to leverage pre-made templates. Let's go ahead and choose the HTML sub option from the document option and hit OK. This will result in a new file that looks something like what you see on my screen here. You can either continue to edit what you see here uh, with just source code, or you can move away from the source tab over to visual, and this will give you a view that's more similar to a traditional word editor. Um, so less code based. Let's just stay on the source code for now. And let's say this document was what you wanted it to be, and you're ready to go ahead and render it. You do that by selecting this knit button. Uh, you won't see it pop up on my screen, but I have a little dialogue asking me what I want to save the file name as, and I will just give it a random name, hit save. And you'll see down here in the render tab, it gives us some code and then eventually pops out with our document over here on the right. In addition to the preview being displayed in your viewer tab, you should also have an HTML file located in the same place that you saved your R markdown file. You can select this file to preview it in your browser as well as send it to others for them to preview. Now let's talk about R notebooks, which is another subset of R markdown documents. There's a lot of crossover between regular R markdown documents and R notebooks. However, R notebooks will generally be used for more technical audiences, such as other R users or even just to organize your own thought processes while coding. So let's try creating a notebook. So we'll go to this new file dropdown again. But this time, instead of choosing our markdown, we'll choose our notebook. And this will give you a file that looks like this in the source pane. It'll, there's some similarities to what we saw before with the conventional R markdown document, but there are some differences. For example, you'll notice that there's not a knit option like there is in an ordinary R Markdown file. This is because the file is meant to be shared in its current format rather than as a rendered document. So this knit button is replaced by a preview button. And if we go ahead and select that, it'll give you the dialog to save your file. I'll go ahead and do that. And then you should get a pop up that looks like this. So it'll generate a preview of your file in the viewer tab. You may also notice that the output of plot cars has not been rendered in the preview. And this is because the code has to be explicitly run in our notebooks in order for it to be displayed in the rendered preview. So let's run the code chunk right here, this little highlighted section by selecting this green play button. Now, if we go ahead and save and then yeah it gets re-rendered and now we have the output of the code included 